they're one of the most destructive natural phenomena on Earth. These vast rotating thunderstorms are self-sustaining heat engines. The winds can reach speeds of over 200 miles per hour. And when they make land, the consequences can be devastating. From extreme rainfall to storm surges. It's an amazingly powerful way of focusing the sun's energy into one little destructive package. But what turns a peaceful patch of ocean into nature's most powerful storm? Tropical cyclones have different names depending on where they originate. Typhoons in the Northwest Pacific, cyclones in the Indian Ocean and South Pacific, and hurricanes in the North Atlantic and Northeast Pacific. The word hurricane um, comes from the language of the Taino, who were a Caribbean indigenous people moved into the Spanish language and then into the English language from there. A 17th century colonist recalled that the terror of the storm was such that I thought it the emblem of hell and the last dissolution of all things. Alexander Hamilton, who grew up in the Caribbean, wrote that the noise accompanying a hurricane would strike astonishment into angels. The hurricane has already whipped across the Bahamas. Throughout history, hurricanes have been wreaking havoc on the coastal communities in their path. Storm warnings along the Florida coast, and remembering the disasters of other years, there is haste among the residents to prepare for the worst. Today, scientists define a hurricane as a rapidly rotating storm system that originates over tropical waters and has closed low-level circulation. So, how do they form? Hurricanes often begin life as a tropical wave. That's a low-pressure area that moves across the Atlantic from Africa. A number of conditions need to align to turn the wave into a hurricane. Sea surface temperatures of at least 26.5 degrees Celsius down to a depth of 50 meters. Near the ocean's surface, there need to be converging winds forcing air to rise and form storm clouds. Up in the atmosphere, too much wind in the wrong direction can tear apart a hurricane, so you need low wind shear. That's the change in direction and speed of winds at increasing heights. There needs to be high relative humidity from the surface to the mid-levels of the atmosphere. The storm has to be more than 5 degrees of latitude from the equator. That's about 200 miles. Hurricanes are sort of like parasitic feedback loop. By taking heat out of the ocean and turning it into water droplets, it creates the wind that takes more heat out of the ocean. It's basically living off the ocean's heat and doing its own thing with it. A hurricane's spin comes from something called the Coriolis effect. To understand this, think of a spinning playground roundabout. Imagine a ball thrown from the middle. Even if the ball is thrown forward, it will curve to the right. On Earth, this happens on a huge scale. This is crucial to the way hurricanes form because the faster air moves, the stronger the Coriolis effect. That's how you get that typical twisted form that's diagnostic of a hurricane when you see it from space. And once the wind speed reaches 74 miles per hour, the tropical storm is officially classified as a hurricane. It's an amazingly powerful way of focusing the sun's energy into one little destructive package. Hi, I'm Katie and I directed this film. If you want to read more of our coverage of extreme weather, why not take out a subscription to The Economist? You'll get daily and weekly analysis of global affairs. You can read us online and in the app and listen to our audio edition. For the best offer, click the link. And now, back to the film. Already historic in strength, Hurricane Patricia on a collision course with Mexico. Its winds right now far more powerful. In 2015, Hurricane Patricia broke records with wind speeds of 215 miles per hour. Even for a typical hurricane, the heat energy pumped into the storm is equal to the average rate at which the United States uses electrical power. That's the whole generating capacity of the country 
powering just one storm. And wind speed isn't the only weapon in a hurricane's arsenal. The thing that powers a hurricane is warm air, moist air, giving up its moisture to form droplets in these huge clouds. Well, those droplets are water and they are going to fall. And it's a lot of precipitation. Hurricanes can release up to two billion tons of rainfall every day. Water causes 90% of deaths from hurricanes, and almost half of those come from storm surges. People are dying, they don't have homes. The city of New Orleans will never be the same. When a hurricane makes landfall, the power of its winds pushes the ocean forward. This wall of water approaching the shore is called a storm surge. With Hurricane Katrina, the storm surge did a huge amount of the damage. It was fairly monstrous. It was about eight meters tall. It broke New Orleans water defenses, the levees and the dikes. That wall of water being pushed in was a key part of why that particular hurricane turned into such a terrible disaster. The sheer force of the wind, of course, causes a lot of damage when you're hit by a hurricane. Also, that wind can be sort of like localised into tornadoes because the wind at the surface can't move as fast as the wind is moving above and you get this extra twisty thing. Once the hurricane starts to move across land, it's no longer able to draw energy from the ocean, forcing the storm to eventually dissipate. But the devastation left behind can take years to rebuild. In the United States, tropical cyclones cost on average $22.4 billion per storm. This is far more than other extreme weather events. Droughts cost an average of $11.1 billion per season. Currently, there's no scientific consensus on whether climate change affects hurricanes' behaviour. But it is clearly influencing the systems that feed the storms. The question of what climate change is doing in, to the power of hurricanes is pretty vexed. Models suggest that over the course of this century as the Earth warms up, hurricanes are unlikely to become more common. In fact, their frequency might decrease slightly. But the storms that do make land are becoming even more destructive. If you have more warm seawater, then the hurricanes have more room to grow and to power themselves up. More than 90% of the extra heat produced by global warming is absorbed by the oceans. Warmer oceans mean more destructive power for hurricanes. There's a general principle that the warmer the air, the more moisture it holds. Extreme rainstorm events are going to become yet more extreme in a warmer world. The classic example of this is Hurricane Harvey, which hit Texas in 2017. Hurricane Harvey and its torturously slow march along the Gulf Coast of Texas. Harvey was widely reckoned to be roughly the worst rainstorm event there's ever been in the United States since records began. There's been analysis suggesting that a hurricane that's as wet as Harvey is about three times more likely given global warming. The damage done by a storm surge depends on where sea level is when the surge starts. And so at a high tide, a storm surge is worse than at a low tide. But there's also this long-term secular change in sea level that is driven by climate change. And that drives sea level up the higher sea level starts, the worse the storm surge will be. Hurricane Ian, which hit the coast of Florida in 2022, was working with a sea level that's about 30 centimetres higher than it was a century ago. And so, you know, that's higher water that you can push further inland. And while scientists are yet to prove there is a link to climate change, hurricanes also appear to be travelling slower. One study found the average forward moving speed of North Atlantic hurricanes decreased by 17% between 1944 and 2017. A hurricane that moves slowly bashes the coast with winds just as strong as it would if it's moving fast. So slower moving hurricanes are not fun. They sound like they're 
a bit better, but they are actually worse in terms of the damage to human life. As these heat engines intensify their destruction, understanding how they are affected by climate change and preparing for their landfall are essential parts of mankind's battle to adapt to a warming world. No amount of checking um, global warming is going to actively reduce the intensity of hurricanes over anything like a human life lifespan. The hurricanes are here, they're part of the system, and so people have to get used to ways of protecting themselves against the hurricanes. I'm Oliver Morton, I'm a senior editor at The Economist. For more of our coverage of extreme weather and climate change, please click on the link below. Thanks for watching, and if you don't, please subscribe.